everybody, my name is Melissa and I'm the Cupcake Stitcher. I want to welcome you to my 24th video uh, here on Floss 2. Um, I go by the Cupcake Stitcher because I like to stitch and I like to bake. Um, this is my first video in five and a half months. So I have a lot to show you here on the table. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, I posted a story not too long ago that asked whether you'd like to see a feature length film or if you would rather see it kind of divided up into a mini series because five and a half months of buying things, stitching things, starting things is a lot to go through. Um, and you guys were pretty much split down the middle. It was almost 50-50. The, the, the feature length film or really long video is what won out. Um, but I've decided to split it into two parts and so this first video that I'm going to obviously make today um, will be everything from my last video which was early May um, up until pretty much the start of October um, or everything not whistle stop related so yeah there's a lot on the table to get through today, guys. I'm very glad to be back. Um, I've just taken some me time in the last couple months. The world is a crazy place. It's nice to take a little break every now and then. Um, we'll kind of go into life stuff first, like we always do. Um, but yeah, very excited to be back. Very excited to show you what I've been working on. I have a little bit of everything today. I have a few starts, some whips, finishes some ffos which i don't normally have um some hauls some gifts and a whole whole lot of fabric um i know that there have been rumors of fabric shortages this year with the whole pandemic situation i think the fabric shortage may have been from me because there's a lot sitting on my table um and part of the reason why I was doing a video is because I just don't have anywhere else to put fabric right now in my, um, I normally have like a little bin, my floss tube bin of all of my purchases, all of the projects and stuff I worked on, and those have been overflowing for weeks now. So there's a lot to do. So today's video, or at least this video that you're watching right now, is going to be from May up until basically whistle stop. And then the second video will be all of my starts, gifts, and my whistle stop experience from 2020, which um, if you all watch Pam and Steph or um, Stitching the Dream, Kentucky Sass, um, any of the other whistle stop group, floss tubers, you know, our whistle stop looked a little bit different this year as most things have. Um, but yeah, so. Without much more further ado, we're just going to get into it. So what have I been doing since May? I went back to work, which was awesome. Um, I got to go back on May 18th, which put me off for pretty much exactly two months. I was off from um, March 17th through May 18th. Uh, and I really enjoyed going back to work. So um, I just recently had my annual review with my boss and we just kind of talked about, you know, she said, I just feel like I've noticed a big attitude change with you, which I'm kind of a grumpy person, which it's just my personality. Um, but she just said, you, I feel like you came back with energy and um, positivity and just like ready to work. And I said, that's because I was, I really did not. I mean, I enjoyed being off. For two months but it was very hard to be off for two months i have worked i've never had that long of a break off since i was 15. um i got a part-time job in high school and so i you know i had school band and work and then i graduated and went to college and so i had school and work and then i graduated and i was in grad school and i had school and work and then I graduated again, and then I started really working, and that's when I got into cross stitch and work. Um, but I had never taken 
that much time off before and it was good and like I said I just went back and I just was ready to work and ready to get back into things and yeah it's been it's been good so we are crazy busy work definitely looks different you know we're still wearing masks we're still trying to social distance as much as possible um our cleaning is through the roof I don't know how our products are our products our equipment is not falling apart from all of the cleaning that we do um but yeah very glad to be back uh everybody that had been off returned um by the end of June which was awesome I think their original plan was by the end of July um we got everybody back that intended or wanted to be back at the time by the end of June we hired we've hired three new people we did have one retire um we had one PTA that decided not to return um she had had a baby over quarantine time um and so she wants to be a stay-at-home mom right now so she is gone um and then we had one PTA that just wanted to take a little extra time she was caring for a parent um and so she came back I think in August and then our last normal person you know that had left um came back beginning of September um she had had a baby in July and so she was off from March to July or March through September so she was definitely nervous to come back but yeah you know, we have everybody back we have like I said three new faces in the office we're just still killing it um which is good uh, one of the new hires, um, you've heard me talk about this before, um, our office is very interested in starting a women's health program and I am going to be involved in that. I just, there were certain aspects of it that I weren't comfortable, I weren't, I wasn't comfortable doing. Um, and so one of the new hires is a PT and she will, she's already taken one of the women's health courses, um, through one of the big certification programs. And, um, so she and I are working really closely. We've had a ton of meetings in the last two or three weeks, um, or at least this month, working on developing a program for women's health. Um, and we're going to start seeing patients for that here in November. Um, so super exciting. So that's work. What else have I been doing? Uh, when I went back to work, I felt like it was a really good time for me to take some time and work on myself so i joined a weight loss program called noom i don't know if you've heard of it before um i'm still kind of doing it i'm not doing it as strictly as i was before um but i have been meal prepping every week which has helped a lot i've just been eating better foods drinking a lot more water, trying to just develop better habits for myself. Um, so yeah, that's good. I found a, a great walking path in my neighborhood. So at one point I was pretty much walking like about three miles every day, um, after work. Uh, and then it got really, really hot and I got out of the habit and never got back into it. But, um, I'm just staying busier trying to go to bed earlier, eating better, drinking lots of water. So trying to make small, manageable, sustainable habits. Um, and I have lost some weight, which is good. Um, so I'm proud of myself about that because it's hard to do. And yeah, else, I don't even know what else I've done. Five and a half months is a very long time to think about what I've been doing. And I'm probably just trying to sound like I'm making excuses. Um, lots of yard work. I think I am currently in the process of doing, I'm trying to do a mini remodel on my master bathroom. That's turning into a bridge, bigger project than I intended it to be. So I'm currently using the other bathroom in the house um, because my master bathroom is out of commission. And the only other thing I've been doing is lots and lots of stitching. So um, we'll probably just get into it if you do have any questions about what I've been doing or want any other excuses, just let me know and I'll be glad to supply those to you. Um, 
But yeah, so we're going to get into this because it's already been 10 minutes of me just jabbering at the camera. So we're going to start with starts because that's the best place to start, right? Um, if you have watched my videos before, you know that um, some of the girls in our Crock-Pot crew, Whistle Stop group, um, are doing something called Whip It Good, where we're challenging ourselves not to start any new projects in 2020, um, except for a few certain instances or time windows where we are allowed to. Um, so one of our um, allowed like new start slots was for StitchCon. Um, obviously, StitchCon did not happen this year, but we still decided as a group that we wanted to do allow one new start for um, that StitchCon weekend. So it had to be started in that time frame. You had to post in our little um, chat. Sorry, hair in my mouth. Um, what your new start was and take a picture and all the things. So this was a piece that I had been wanting to do for a really long time. And by really long time, I mean like, February, March, um, when this pattern was released. And this is Ink Circles After the Roses. We have all seen this piece. It's amazing. We're really going to get the shadow from the light in my phone, but um, I'll try and do my best. So uh, I wanted to do this in all the called for threads. I called Keep Six and they supplied those for me. So um, they are all the called for fibers. Um, and I just asked them to pick out some 32 count fabric for me. And I did mention on the phone, I really like R and R fabric. Uh, so they gave, they sent me two different pieces and this is the one that I chose. I really should have cut this down. Um, it looks a little crazy. I do not know what fabric this actually is. They didn't have it listed on the card. It just literally had a question mark, but it did have R and R 32 count. So this is my start. I'll try and hold it up since the phone shadow is hanging out there. Uh, but I obviously started in the corner and I just picked out the first color that I saw and then I'm just stitching it down, stitching that whole length. Um, and then grabbing another color. So that's just kind of how I'm going about it. I don't remember when this has started, but it's on 32 count R&R &R linen. If anyone thinks they know what this is, you can let me know. But otherwise I have no idea what the color is, but I do really like it. It's definitely a more yellowy. They gave me, um, I told them to send me two, two fat quarters um, and they sent me two fat quarters. One was a little bit more uh, neutral, more like a natural type linen. Uh, this one definitely has a little bit more of a yellow cast or tone to it. So that is, this was my uh, stitch con allowance start. Sorry, I am going to clean it as I go because there's gonna be a lot for me to just clean in general. I'm gonna put that on the floor. Uh, my second allowed start, I do not have a picture of the finished piece because it is two patterns combined. Um, I will insert uh, a picture of what the two pieces look like here. All those two patterns hopefully if I remember to put them in and uh, if I <laughs> figured out how to do it because it's been a while since I've made a video and so their lantern patterns I'm going to be kind of taking one from each pattern and then alternating them uh, across I'm very excited about this pattern this was an allotment for one of our What's Stop Girls, Katie. Um, she had a death in the family. And so um, we decided as a group, again, that we were going to allow um, kind of a memorial piece for her mom. So 
super excited about this piece. I love this so much. I'm probably going to change the quotes. Um, so it's light up someone's life. That's the other one. Uh, I don't even remember what the other quote says. When it's dark outside, light up your inner fire is what the other one says. I'm still debating on what I want it to actually say. Um, but yeah, I have time because I have a million wits at this point. I think I'm up like past 50 with all of my whistle stop starts. Uh, so <laughs> I have time to figure out what I'm going to put on this. So this is on a 40 count steel gray linen from Zweigart. And I got this in a silk weaver sale. And here is my teeny, teeny tiny little start. So let me fold this here so we can zoom in. Hold it up towards the camera. Um, this is going to be all DMCs. Stitching it one thread over one over two. Yes, one over two on 40 count. Um, and I made this little knee reminder. And it says when it's dark, look for stars. And I love it. I am obsessed with this piece and I really want to get back to stitching it. Um, but I have plans. <laughs> it just, this is not anywhere near where I need it to be on my wish list of what I want to stitch. But I have things that I really, really want to get done. Um, and it is sitting in this lovely bag here that I made because I got a sewing machine and I figured out how to make project bags from my friend Katie. And so I have been on a project bag kick. Uh, this is the only one that you'll see today um, of the ones that I have made. But my next video that has all of my whistle stop starts, I have probably about 11, 12 more to show. Um, so it has this really fun gray print on the back. And then this lovely blue, blue and gray bird print inside. Love this. I actually did a reverse of this bag. So that's one of the other ones um, that's just sitting off to my left here. Um, but yeah, I am by no means a professional sewer. And so someone asked me if I was going to start sewing bags. And I'm like, no, honey, no. Like, they're good for me. Like, I'm happy with them. They're functional. But like, if you looked at this, like, I wouldn't ask someone to pay me to make them a bag. You know, like, mm, no. My sewing skills are not up to sub, you know, not up to par yet. Yeah. So those are my two new starts. Let's move on to wits. Don't fall, don't fall. I'm watching my other piles, like don't fall. All right, I don't remember when I worked on this. I'm, so I'm guessing it's probably back in May or in June. This is my stained glass aerial. Here is a finished picture of what she'll look like when she's done, supposedly. I don't know if that's actually true. Uh, I must have been working in the blue because I still have a needle with blue thread on it. And I'm not going to take this off the hoop. I probably should. Let's do that. This is one of my oldest whips. Um, it is a full coverage piece. The pattern is no longer available. There are similar patterns that I've seen on Etsy, but this particular um, seller does not have this list anymore. It's the back side. Um, the colors on this are amazing. It is a really pretty piece. I could see finishing this. I think I talked about this last time. I don't think it would take me long to finish this, especially if I did like five or six colors a month. Um, I don't, I think maybe the most amount of stitches I have in any color is like 400 four or five um because I normally I normally I think with this one I was color completing and I was starting with the the one with the highest number of stitches and working my way down I've since kind of changed that but 
Um, I think all of the, the big ones are done. So 500 stitches is like the max in any one color that's left. Um, and I think I said in May, like if I did five or six colors every month, I could be done with it by the end of the year. It's not going to happen. <laughs> but 2021 is a whole nother story. We are going to do Whip It Good again. We're going to make our own um, group where we post pictures. It'll be just for us. Um, we don't really want it to be a, a huge thing or production. You're more than welcome to join along. Um, but it's really just a private little friend challenge. So maybe 2021 she'll be done. I could definitely see this being a finish in 2021. I'd like to get some of my older wits off of my plate. So second whip. I just realized there's one sitting on the room or sitting on the floor across the room. Don't know what that one is. I might go pick it up. Oh, I know what it is. I'm not going to pull it out because I put in like a string. And it's the one of the companion pieces to this next one. This next one is Seasons in Chalk Art Fall by Hands on Design. Um, I don't have much of this done. I think I was working on this during like a Zoom meeting or something like that uh, that we had. One day with the Whistle Stop crew, um, my needle miner is getting attached to the floss ring. So here's what I have done. I think this is the way it goes. So I really need to finish these. I have three of these started. So the other one that I think I pulled out was the Stars and Stripes. Um, that's a big flag one. I think that was the other one that I had pulled out and that's sitting over there on the floor. I can't exactly remember. Um, here are the color four colors. I think I'm still missing one. Missing curry or carrot. I, I'm missing curry. Uh, I don't remember what color or what um, floss it is, but I just haven't picked it up. So again, this has been a while since I've worked on it, so I have no idea what I last stitched. No idea. But this is on a 32 count slate hand dyed by Stephanie, which is the called for fabric. Maybe more potential 2021 finishes. We'll see. Very ambitious. This next one, sorry, floss tube itchy nose, is in my amazing lots of stitch and stash Rika bag. I'm obsessed with this bag. I love it so much. She does beautiful, beautiful work. Her seams and binding is impeccable. Um, this is my Lucha Rapunzel from Make It Pink. She does have her own website now. If I remember, I'll link it, but I probably won't remember. I have two of these princesses started. I have Cinderella, which is right here. I have not touched it since I started it. And obviously Rapunzel. Rapunzel was my 2020 goal, finish goal, like my big, my big 2020. Um, something else overtook that, which is a finish. So we'll see that here shortly. Um, I just have BMCs like sitting in here too. Because I really want to get back to this because I still really want it to be a finish. But we're almost towards the end of October and I have other things that I need to work on. Um, so we'll see what happens. But I think the last time I showed this, I'm not going to take it off the Q-snap because again, I'm lazy. But here she is. So she's coming together quite well. I think the last time I showed her, I had um, put in like this side of her bodice and her sleeve. I don't think I had her hand done. Um, I had this one done, but I don't think I had this one done. So I finished that and then I moved up here to the hair. So I did her hair, her face minus back stitch is done. Um, and so this is all fill in um, skin and I'm doing the skin 
two over one tent stitch on 36 count. This is a um, even weave, 36 count even weave Modena from Silk Weavers in the color pearl gray. I love this fabric and you're going to see a lot more of the 36 count Modena. Um, yeah. And so I still have the flowers put in her hair, all of that one over one skin. There's still a lot of work to do. All the backstitch, all the beads, the French knots. So she, um, she may not be a 2020 finish, but she will be a, at least an early 2021 finish. Uh, just depends on how much time my other projects and plans take, but yeah, she's out of all of my whips, she is the next one to be done. Like, I've already decided, like, this is what's happening. So, other than the things that I have to complete, which we are getting to. Oh, I was like, where is it? No, nope, that's not it. Yes, it is. Okay. So much stuff, guys. So, all of my coworkers at this point know that I cross-stitch. Some of them make fun of me for it, and I don't care. I made cupcakes on Friday this past week because um, we had a student and it was her last day. She was from Ohio State. She'd been with us for nine weeks. And so her clinical instructor, one of the other ther th therapists, asked if I would make her cupcakes. And so I said yes. And with the return of Ohio State football this week, I was like, I'm going to do Buckeye cupcakes because um, I had sprinkles I had bought from a cake store that were scarlet and gray. And by scarlet and gray, I mean red and silver. And they were awesome. So I made the cupcakes. I brought them in and someone was like, you even have scarlet and gray uh, sprinkles. And I was like, yeah, I got them from the cake store. And someone's like, there's a store just for cake. And I said, yeah. I was like, there's, I know where all the cool stores are at. And then one of my other coworkers across the room was like, oh yeah. She goes, there are, uh, there, there are stores just for cross stitch. Melissa took me up to Finley one day and we went to a store with just cross stitch stuff. And I'm pretty sure half the room like groaned, like, are you serious? Because I was like, I don't know where all the cool stores are at. And of course, I'm talking about the craft gallery, um, which is fantastic. I said, there are multiple of those keepsakes. There's one in Columbus, cross my heart. I said, I know where all the cool stores are at. Um, I don't even know where I was going with that story. But work, work, I figured it out, figured out how this connected. Um, I had a date. I went on a date and he was saying that he was a really bad storyteller. And I said, mm, I really am. I said, I start up somewhere where I don't even know where I'm going. Or, you know, I end up where I don't even know where I'm going. Um, the second date didn't go that well, but that's okay. So at work, everyone knows at this point that I cross stitch. And so the one day, one of the other therapists was talking with her patient um about crochet because that's what she taught herself how to do over quarantine um so she's been crocheting a lot and her patient said i think um i think her husband may have passed away um within the last year and so she's been doing a lot of cleaning i think she's moving and she said she found a whole lot of cross stitch projects um and she goes i did it years ago she goes i don't remember how to do it my eyes i can't see it she goes but there are things that i want done and so my coworker grabbed me and said, hey, I don't know if you'd be willing to help this lady out, um, but she has some projects that she wants done. So I talked a little bit with um, this patient. She wasn't mine, my patient, but I sat and talked with her for a little bit. And I said, you know, I don't really know if I'm looking to finish a whole lot of things. I said, but one or two things, depending on the size, I said, bring stuff in and we can kind of talk about it. And so she said, well, there's only like one or two that I really want done. One was started and one was not. So uh, this first one, yes, if you're wondering, if you're getting where I was going with this, yes, I got roped into finishing projects for this lady. So um, she is going to pay me, which I appreciate. But at the same time, these two pieces, I don't know what kind of significance they have to her. But these were the pieces that she picked out that had significance um, and that she wanted 
completed. So this first one was not started. And so I have been working on this pretty steadily in the last couple weeks. This is from Designs for the Needle and it's pattern number 5211 and it's literally just called Wolf. Let's see if I can, let's go to this side. There it goes. Um, so this is on 18 count Fiddler's Cloth, which I do really enjoy stitching on. Um, the other thing that I compared that I like this project so much better than the other one that I'll show you here that is a finish, um, purely because it was a new start. And so I know that the stitching that I'm doing, if I make a mistake, it's on me. Um, the other one was kind of a hot mess when I got it. It looks okay. I mean, it's definitely not my jam, but, um, it is finished. So I am getting really close to finishing this one. Um, I finished putting in all of the green yesterday. And so I literally just have a little bit of blue for the, there's like snow mounds at the bottom. I don't even know if you can see it. Uh, kind of sore. And then the, the branches for the border and backstitch and then I'm done. So um, this should be done by the end of October. My goal is to finish that this week. I think I can get it done for sure. So next time I make a video, I probably, I may take a picture of it, but I probably won't have this to show because I'll try, I'm gonna try and get it back to the to lady as quickly as possible. I've had these two patterns since about the end of July, I think. <laughs> Um, and we're working on those pretty slowly. So those are my whips. I now have two finishes. Um, I'll go right into the other one that the lady had me finish. And this is a Bucilla kit. It's Tasha Tudor's Memories. And this particular one is called Feeding the Birds. So this is the pattern. This one was about halfway done when I got it. So the little girl's dress was stitched. This post was stitched. This bucket was stitched. Um, a little bit of the snow over here in this corner was done. Part of the branch. Actually, there was stitching here, but it wasn't right. Um, and actually, most of the stitching wasn't right. They used to, one, whoever was stitching on it was using like one thread when the pattern calls for two. So I don't know why that was the way it was. Um, the color cards, I don't think they separated the colors correctly um, or labeled them correctly. Cause I went online and I found a Bucilla to DMC conversion uh, chart. And sometimes I pull things and I'll be like, that's just not the right color. Um, so this completed piece does have mistakes in it, but I just kind of worked around it as best as I can. And I feel like you won't be able, I don't think you'll be able to tell on the camera what I stitched versus what the other person stitched. Um, but I can in person. And I think if you looked at it in person, you would as well. So here is the completed piece. Um, this is a big one. So this was the first one I wanted to get done. And then when I really started looking at it, uh, it, it was a, it was a big mess. Uh, so, I mean, you can even tell between the two posts. So I stitched this one, which is how it calls for it to be stitched with two strands versus over here, they stitched it with one. So you can really tell a color difference side to side, but I stitched it how the instructions said. And then the same thing with the little girl's dress. So she had stitched or whoever had stitched it had done most of her body. I did her face, her head, her hat, um, and like the upper part of her coat and her gloves. And you can just tell how much more saturated those colors are when it's stitched with two threads versus one. Because this red, this dark red right here is all like along a lot of the back stitch lines and you can hardly see a difference down here versus up here 
Um, so definitely some major fudging along this side here where this met. I think I had to add like four stitches or something because um, I wanted this to line up with the piece. So I started like, I don't remember where I went, but I made it work. I'm glad it's done. <laughs> this was a big piece. Uh, this caused a lot of headaches to finish, but it is done. The wolf is almost done. And then I came back to my own stitching. So after this, um, I also stitched obviously our whistle stop exchange piece. Uh, so that I'll show pictures of in the next video. Um, but that was another finish that I, that I had had, um, my other plans include, so I need to finish the wolf. I need to do my uh, whistle stop or a crock pot crew secret Santa exchange piece. I have the pattern and then I'm just going to pull stuff from stash to stitch it because um, it really doesn't call for any specific colors. But uh, I have that to work on. That will be after the wolf and then... The other thing I need to finish before our Secret Santa exchange is our Lasting Friendship, um, which is a piece we're doing round robin style. I need to finish the border. So those are my plans. I have those three pieces to do, and then I want to get back to Rapunzel um, and really crank out that piece. So this is the big finish that if you follow me on Instagram, or you're on Stitch Mania, you may have seen this. Um, I started this project, our first Whistle Stop retreat back in 2018. So at the time we all, um, or one of our group members had found a fabric dyer, um, Seraphim Fabrics, and she found a fabric that she really liked. It was called Shenanigans. And so we as a group decided, let's all buy a piece of Shenanigans in whatever count or you know type of fabric we want. And we're all gonna stitch a autumnal piece on it. Um, I kept saying it was the top autumny. And Stephanie was like, do you mean autumnal? And I was like, no, autumny. And I am an overachiever. And I picked a giant piece to work on and I made it as complicated as possible. And so, like I said, if you follow me, you know what this piece is. This is my Zuka from Alessandra Adelaide Needleworks. And I stitched it entirely in beads. So uh, this was technically a restart because I originally bought 32 count Lugana. Uh, and the beads just weren't sitting right. So I ended up going, um, I bought another piece of the same fabric in 28 count Lugana and the beads fit on it perfectly. Um, like perfectly. I, it looks so good. I used two colors of beads. Um, I did do a, an orange and green pumpkin. Um, and so I do have some material listed here for you just in case you want the details um i use delica size 11 beads i got those from fire mountain gems online uh the green beads that i purchased are db0148 and the orange beads are db0045 um both size 11 if you're wondering how many you would need to buy the green I got away with buying, it's a 7.5 gram tube. Um, I have very little left, but one tube did work for the green. For the orange, I bought a 50 gram container, which I used the entire thing. And then I bought another 7.5 gram tube um, and I used some, I didn't, there wasn't much that came out of this, um, 
but I used this entire, sorry, I keep shaking the camera, this entire container of beads. Guys, I'm obsessed with this piece. This piece is going to be framed for sure. Um, I'm most likely going to take it up to craft gallery to get it framed. Um, but here she is. Guys, this is done. So when I picked this piece back up, this was my stitch mania. I'm just going to keep flashing it like this because you can just see how the light hits those beads. They're metallic lined beads. So, um, the light is going to hit them and make them shine and shimmer. And my God, guys, it's so amazing. I am obsessed. Um, I made this my, my stitch mania piece. And so when I picked it up at the very beginning of May, I had the green stem done and I had a little bit of this, mm, I don't know, kind of like in here done. And then what I did every day, I would do one length of floss and stitch beads. Like that's what I do every single day. And I want to say it took me like 143 days. The last day I got a little crazy and I was like, I'm just finishing it today. It's happening. Um, and I just cranked it out. But um, I obviously need to cut down some fabric over here. But guys, it's so amazing. It looks better over here. Um, I will insert some detail pictures and detail video of this but I think I mean you guys can just at least it's showing up on my camera really well how much light hits this Can't wait to have this hanging up in my house. Cannot wait. Oh my god, it's so pretty. And my favorite thing to do is just touch the beads. It's very ASMR for me. To like scratch the beads and oh, so pretty. So pretty. I'm just gonna keep flashing it because it's this is like a masterpiece, okay? This is one of my greatest stitching feats. <coughs> Excuse me, I've just been like talking nonstop. So I'm just going to roll this back up because that's kind of how I have it stored. I don't want to fold it because I don't want to, you know, damage any of the bead beadwork. Yeah, so... That was my big finish. That one's not going on the floor. That's sitting on the table. My big finish. I may pick up another piece once I'm done with all of my plans. Um, after I'm maybe done with Rapunzel. So going into 2020, I may pick up a piece and do one train a day again. Because I really enjoyed that. I felt like I made good steady progress on it in those three or four months. So let's move on to FFOs because I'm already at 43 minutes. I haven't shown any of my haul and I'm not even done with this half of the table yet. <coughs> I keep talking so much that now I'm coughing because I need water and I'm out of water. <laughs> so I don't think any of these are new finishes. I think I've shown all of these finishes before, um, but they are all FFO'd um, and some of them need to be put away. 
because it's not summer anymore and it's not the 4th of July anymore, but we're going to go through them. So I finished all of these myself. We have a couple pillows and then we do have um, some hard finishes as well. So the first one is um, Needle Bling's Design. Get your tail to the beach. You can see how sparkly this is. So this is a petite treasure braid and then the blue is mixed um it's a weeks mixed with a crinic on i want to say 32 count i'm gonna guess winter brew because that's my favorite r&r &R fabric um and so i picked out this scale type pattern i had used this for a different finish my stitch con finish where I had a little beach chair. Um, that's what I used this for previously. I thought it worked perfectly with this. <coughs> and then on the back is um, a metallic-y finishing fabric that I had used for a project bag, coordinating fabric. Um, I think it works perfectly. And then at Michael's, they have these trim bundles. Um, and so there's different kind of colorways. And so this was, there was like a neutral colorway. Um, and it had this kind of like, I don't even know what to, scallop trim. And it matched the pinky um, petite treasure ray perfectly. So I just sewed that right on and... Guys, I love this one so much. I love all of my finishes, but I love this one. Uh, the other ones, the other two finishes I have are the uh, Be Well and Stitch patterns. I did two of them. Uh, woo! Throwing things. This first one is from Drawn Thread. I was like, I'm drawing a blank. Drawn Thread. I did my own color conversion just a small little pillow. This coordinating fabric I had already bought. It matched this thread perfectly, which I think is it's either bewitched or bejeweled. I want to say bejeweled. Um, and then on the back is the same finishing fabric. And is it somewhat metallic-y? You can bet your bottom dollar. So, and then the last one, is from hello from liz matthews this was her let's stay home pattern um again this was i think all of the the fiber and the floss color and cotton color and cotton color and cotton uh and i love this finish too so i did kind of that offset um style with this cute floral pattern again I'd already bought the fabric and I was like I think that's gonna work perfectly and it did and so then I just grabbed a ribbon I was gonna do just a ribbon but then I was like I had these buttons from um, a stitchy box subscription box and I was like I think that matches and so I used our um, crockpot crew hive mind and asked I had like nothing this which was my favorite option and then I had it like a jeweled one, um, a sparkly one. And I think everybody picked the button. So that's what I went with. I think it adds just enough of a little pop to it. So love this one. So those are all of my soft finishes. And then my two hard finishes are actually like the same thing. So I found this little tray at Joann's on the clearance rack a while ago and it's been sitting in my craft room. And so I was like, this is gonna make a great little just backing project for um, some of my pieces so that I can change it out seasonally. So right now I have a summery 4th of July one and then I have a winter one. So I put magnets on here so that I wasn't wasting a ton of magnets. And then from the store, um, hardware store, I just bought some metal washers. 
So this first one is from um, Country Cottage Needleworks. This is Snow. I got the pattern from um, Heather the Blessed Stitcher. So she passed the stash to me and then I passed the stash on to somebody else um, in a giveaway on one of my previous videos. So um, yeah, I just finished it um, on some mat board with a little bit of batting underneath. Not it was a really thin batting just because I didn't want it to be super puffy, but I wanted it to be a little bit softer. Um, and then I put it on this red and white striped ticking. Um, I love this. So if I want to, I can add some little sprigs of things. If not, I do like just kind of how it is. So when it's this, you know, winter time, it'll just kind of sit. I've been having it sit down here kind of on the floor at the base of my fireplace. Um, so it'll sit like this and then I can just take it off. And the other one, I made this just a smidge too big. And so it, it doesn't fit in that space um, without bending it. So can you tell though? No, you can't tell. So if you turn it this way, it's not actually attached, but it's okay. Um, so I can do it either way. I think that's how I had it. So it was kind of poking out at the bottom. Um, but when it's just sitting there, it's fine. No one's really fiddling with it. So this one I did a double mount. Um, I did that same red and white ticking um, at the very back. And then I did the same width as, uh, or I guess the same height as the, the piece itself. I did this uh, blue and white star. So it's flag-ish. And then obviously my stitching here, again, I used a little bit of batting underneath there. I grabbed two different ribbons and tied them together. Um, and so that just kind of sits on top. So I'm going to show that off. Super happy. So this one has actually just still, still been sitting up. Um, I'll probably just put this away until I'm ready to pull out my Christmas stuff. And then I'll just put this one out with my Christmas stuff for now. It'll work fine. Uh, but yeah, so love this. Love it. And I just like how these then can kind of stack, um, or have a little cubby in my closet, um, and they can just kind of slide in, in the cubby. So it'll be perfect. So those are my FFOs. Let's move on to haul and gifts and stuff like that. So pattern wise, we don't have a lot to get through. It's, 90% of my haul is fabric. Patterns, not so much. So, um, for our StitchCon weekend, uh, we didn't really meet as a group. I did end up going down to Cincinnati, um, and I stayed with my friend Katie Glass. Um, she has a room in her basement, which you're probably like, room in her basement. It's very nice. Um, I love to sleep, and so this is like the perfect room for sleeping. There are no windows. It's cool. It's perfect. Like her husband. Hi, Andy. Um, he calls it Melissa's room because it is my room. Uh, I'm one of the people that stay there pretty frequently. So uh, I stayed with her for a few days. I can't even remember if it was just one night or if it was two. I think it was two. I don't remember. Katie, it was so long ago. So much has happened in that time. Um, but my good friend Katie, she gave me some gifts. Uh, some things that she was going to give away um, or sell. And she was like, well, do you want any of this? And so I kind of took what I wanted. Um, the first thing she did give me were these super cute scissors. That kind of have a blue and white like china pattern on it. Um, and she got them from... Chelsea Buns cross stitch. So these have literally been sitting and I'm like, I can't put them in my little tote until I show them. So they've been sitting there since June. So now I can pull them out and put them with my cross stitch stuff. Super excited about that. Um, and then she gave me two of the Teeny Weenies series. So I believe this is the original one. This is Teeny Weenie from Plum Street light 
trying not to get the glare. There. And then this is Jeans and Weenies, um, which is kind of their patriotic one. There we go. So she gave me those two. She also gave me Carriage House Samplings a year at Hawthorne Hollow, which is a big piece. So I don't know if or when I'll stitch this, but it's in my stash. And then the last one um, that I took from her, uh, this is the Prairie Schooler book number 193, Where There Are Bees. I think this one's cute. I could see that being a very, very fun stitch. Where there are bees, there is honey. There's a little bear. I love the bear on there. So. Now, of course, when I was down there, I um, went to Keepsakes. Because why not? And I bought some things from them. So this was a kit that I bought from them. It is Beezy at Stitching. Uh, this is from the Primitive Hair and it is a kit. So it has the gold board here. It has the fabric, the trim. Um, it does not have any of the fibers, um, but it looks like they're, they use a metallic and then like some black and maybe like a ecru type color. Um, so Beezy at Stitching. So I bought that full kit. Um, what else did I buy from them when I was there? I know this is from Keepsakes because it has a Keepsakes sticker on it. And they also have a model of this one. And I have seen this model. I've looked at this model every time I've been there. And I was just like, I feel like I really need this. Because one of the things I have really enjoyed doing in the last, um, I'd probably say like two years, is gardening. Um, and I don't really plant a lot of like edible plants, but flowers I love. And so this piece is called May I, it's from All Through the Night. And it says, may I a small house and a large garden have. And so I love how this is stitched on the black dark fabric with all of those flowers. It's so pretty. And every time I see the model, I'm just like, it's so pretty. Why don't I have that? And so they didn't have any in stock, but they ordered it for me and it came in and I got it the next time I was here. Um, I ordered Madame Chantilly Summer. Celebrate Summer. I need to order the Autumn one. And I'm probably just going to end up ordering Spring and Easter. I like bits and pieces of both. I don't know if I'll do both of the trays, but I might as well just have the whole series, right? Right. And I think that's it pattern-wise from Keepsakes. Um, from Cross My Heart, I grabbed Grab Life from Hamlin Design. It's this little crab. Super cute. Um, I actually grabbed another one, and that is a this that was a whistle stop start. So you'll see that one here um, when I do my other video, which I don't know if it'll be tonight because at this point, um, I think it's already like 7 30, 8 o'clock. We're getting getting up there in time. Uh, and then I went up to the craft gallery. They have kind of like a, a garage sale where they let other, I mean, they let anybody come and set up a table um, and sell any of their cross stitch related items. And so I bought a couple of random things. I'm pretty sure like these patterns were like a dollar a piece. Um, first one's from Poppy Creations called Tis the Gingerbread Season. I thought it was cute. It says, tis the gingerbread season. And then this other one is a fancy that pattern called snow catchers. It's, just, it's like a little hanging thing, um, but they're just all stacked on top of each other. Little snowmen. So I like this one. This one I may start at some point. Not sure about this one, but I was like, it's a dollar. Why not? And then I bought more patterns from them, which you'll see later on. Uh, but one I, I did buy and have not kitted up or started is a Rosewood Manor, Manor uh, Dreaming of Mums. Mums are one of my favorite flowers. Part of the reason why I like fall so much. There's so many mums. I bought so many mums this year and they're somehow all still alive. 
because we've had actually like decent fall weather. So love this one. Um, I think I've talked about how my sister has started stitching and she is much more of a monogamous stitcher than I am. Um, and so she's cranking things out left and right. She has started to just buy things, just to buy things, which I think is fun. Um, like fabric wise, she hasn't started into the floss. She hasn't been to a, uh, an LNS yet. So I think she has a day or two off or like a week off in um, November that we may go to a store somewhere so that she can kind of see all of the stuff. Um, but this is one of the patterns that she has on her <laughs> one, two, three wish list. She has like all of the, these in the series. Um, they have like the daisies. I think they have a rose one. I'm trying to find them on the back here and I can't, but she has, um, she has quite a few of the different flowers and my sister has like all of them on her wish list from one, two, three stitch. And then the last pattern purchase that I have to show you today, like I said, there are more, but those are, a lot of them were starts, um, cause I bought them and I wanted to start them right away. So is an out of print pattern, um, from who knew I had purchased one of the other patterns off of eBay. Um, and then I found out that there are more. And so then I've had this one like on my watch list and it came up and I got into a little bit of a bidding war with someone, but I did end up winning this. And this is probably the one that I wanted most. Um, and this is ocean treasure from who knew. So it's just, I mean, I just like the versatility of these pieces because you can pick whatever um, fabric and floss color you want. It does give you um, recommendations, obviously, of what this was stitched on and with, but you can kind of pick whatever you want. And then, of course, there's just a little bit of sparkle for the treasure. So I'm sorry if you were the person that I was bidding against because I was real sneaky and I just snuck in right at the end. But yeah the person got wiser because there was another one um, that I wanted in the series and they were both, they were literally like ending like five minutes apart. So I think I was bidding against the same person. That person got the other one. I got this one, which is the one that I wanted more. So we're good. Maybe I'll have, I think there's four of the mermaids. Um, maybe I'll have them all one day, but right now I have two of them. So now the last non fabric purchase which is a lie, but kind of sore, um, is a scissor fob that I got from Jen Upton. And I already forgot, Jen, I just forgot your, I just forgot her, um, she started a Facebook group for her scissor fobs. Um, she, they're so cute. I think right now she's working on some Christmas ones and then she got like some Disney charms that I saw. She keeps posting like the supplies that she gets. Um, but I did order one from her. And again, this is sat in the basket because I need to show it because otherwise I would forget to show it and I didn't want to forget to show it. So, um, Jen, I'm really sorry. I will link the Facebook group below, or at least write down in the description box what Jen's Facebook group is called because I am just blanking because I've been talking now for over an hour. Um, but this is the one that I picked out. I am obsessed with it. Um, it says, whoop, turn, 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 turn. It says, be the light. And of course, oh, stop turning. Um, it's sparkly and metallic. And it's blue and it's beautiful. She's got these blue, almost, I don't know how to describe the buttons. They're very pretty and it's gold and it's so pretty. This will probably go on these scissors because why not? But yes, Jen, this is gorgeous. I'm obsessed with it. And I can't wait to use it. So she has so many different kinds. And I know that um, she normally reserves space, I think, for some custom orders. So if there's something specific you're looking for, you can kind of 
um, chit chat with her and have a discussion and she can piece things together. So fabric, let's get to fabric. So one of the things I grabbed, and this is the other non fabric thing, but, um, I ordered my Nashville purchases from keepsakes. And one of the things I had on my list was the well-rounded um, fabric pack. And they just, I these sold out so fast. So I went across my heart one day and they must have gotten there or been waiting in line to get these because um, they had two or three packs left um, just sitting out on one of the tables. So I snagged that and then I snagged the um, die cut circles. So. I just wanted one set that way I could take it and trace it and then um, for the others because this you would literally need to buy four packs of these at $8.50 a piece, which is fine. I can cut out mat board for cheaper than that. So um, I have those and so now I have that. Uh, I don't have the pins for it, but I do have the trim. I have the fabric and I think... It's all just uh, DMC. So this may be a New Year's Eve start for me. Because once I start one in the series, we're good to go. All right. Now fabric. I'm going to try and go through this quickly. But there's a lot of it. Fabric. Fabric. So if you're wondering why there's a probably a shortage of cross stitch fabric, it's because I have it all in my house, all of it. So the way that I've kind of organized this is by designer or dyer of sorts. Um, so when I went down for Whistle Stop, I went to Keepsakes and I was looking for fabric for a few pieces um, that I was going to be starting. And they had just gotten in an order of Fiber on a Whim, 36 count, which is my favorite count. I really like even weave, but this is a linen and it's fine because it's gorgeous of like all neutrals. And there were like six or seven of them and I had to pick and I picked four. <laughs> um, one of them must be, I don't remember what the other one is. But it's, I think, completely in the project. So, like, the whole piece. But the other ones are kind of just pieces now. Um, I can fit an ornament on this. I swear. Someone else is like, why? Why did you even save that? Because I will fit something on this. I will make it happen. Because this is gorgeous, gorgeous fabric. Um, this is cappuccino. It's so pretty. This is... This one's a bigger piece, I promise. It's just folded down. Uh, this is Milk and Honey. This is, I think, lighter. What is this one? This one is Cream and Sugar. I think this was the lightest. And then Milk and Honey. There we go. You can start to see the difference. And then I think Cappuccino is next. And then the last one was affogato. I remember because we were like, what is an affogato? And it's like a coffee based drink in Italy. Um, and so that was a little bit more tan or beige, grayish. I don't remember, but it's in my pile over here. Um, and so I bought fat cores of all of them and I should have probably just bought a fat half because I need all of this fabric, all of it. It's so pretty and it's so nice to stitch on too. Those are all 36 count linens going in the stash. I also ordered some seraphim fabric fabrics in one of the sales that she had. And so some of these are like, I don't remember what she calls them, but they're messed up or pieces that she had that might have like minor flaws in them. So this first one is a 36 count linen in Serafina. This one's very pretty. It's a blue purple. It's got a little bit of green mixed in it too. Um, or I think they might've been like out of 
like retired, there we go, that's the word I'm looking for, retired um, dyes. So this is a 36 count linen, so pretty. This is also, no, this is a 32 um, in Arctic Glacier. So they're all different sizes and cuts. This is a bigger piece. I think this is one of the ones that has, some of them have like dye, like un, undissolved dye splots, splotches on them, um, which is totally fine because I'll find a use for them um, where I can either cut it or cut it, you know, kind of cut off that salvage um, piece. So sorry, again, you guys are going to need to watch me fold things so that I can stay somewhat organized. More from her. This is a 40 count linen. This one does not have a name. But it's a greeny gray with a little bit of blue mixed throughout. Uh, so this is one that does have like the unresolved um, or undissolved dye. Where is it? There it is. So you can see those two pink slot, uh, spots there. So I will just find something that covers those spots. It's not a problem. It's totally fine. And then I think this is the last one from Lori. And this is also a, this is a 36 count. This does not have a name either. This one also I think has some dye on it or like some weird modeling or something on it. I don't remember, but this is a big piece as well. This one is very, it's like more of a green and a tan mixed together. But yeah, I'm like, it's probably just taking up the whole screen. Fabric. If you don't want to look at fabric, you can turn your camera off because that's literally all I have to show for the rest of this video. Probably for another half hour because there's so much fabric. Because I crossed the nationwide shortage or the worldwide shortage. Um, I've gotten two fabrics of the month from Leslie under the sea fabrics. I am obsessed with both of them. Um, I know that she has had a hard time getting stuff in this year. Fabric dies. Um, and then she, I mean, she's a busy lady. I don't know how she has time to finish any fabric. Um, but the two fabric of the month pieces that I have received since my last video, I'm obsessed with both of them and they both need to go into her permanent line. So the most recent one I got yesterday, and this is 32 count Lugana is what I get. And, and this is spellbound and it is a gorgeous gray. Um, I think the linen might be a little bit more blue, but the Lugana is gray. It is stunning. I want everything in this color. So pretty, Leslie. You did a fantastic, fantastic job. Now this other one is called Melissius, which is kind of like my name. And so I looked up what Melissius meant. Um, and if you know Leslie, she does a lot of like Greek um, or myth mythological names to her dyes. Melissius means um, honeybee or like it's like the god of the honeybees or something like that. Do you know what Melissa stands for? Honeybee. So gorgeous honey colored fabric. Again, 32 count Lugana. So pretty. It's gorgeous. Two very beautiful neutrals. I love when she does more of the neutral. I like her bright, colorful things, and you'll see that. Um, I have a crazy fabric from her for one of my whistle stop starts, and I'm obsessed with it. But neutrals. You can't go wrong. Like, look how pretty, look how pretty they are together. Leslie, you knocked it out of the park with both of those. Um, these were two random purchases from the craft gallery uh, that I got cut down or that I cut down since I purchased them. This is a 40 count lakeside linen in navy bean. So this is on, this is one of my projects uses this. Obsessed. And then I really think I wanted whatever projects I used for
for this and this next one. I really wanted 36 counts because that's what I like the most. But I was obsessed with both of these fabrics. The navy bean, first of all. Navy bean, lakeside, gorgeous. Um, this other one is a Weeks um, in Platinum 40 count. I love this. It's so soft. <laughs> um, this is the old... I think it's the old um, weave. So it's a really loose weave. And this is what I have left after taking what I needed for my project. Um, but it's a beautiful gray. Gorgeous gray. I love grays, in case you haven't figured that out yet about me. Um, I have this 32 count gingham. It's definitely, it's an even weave type fabric. Um, decent size. And this is Weigart fabric too. So um, I actually got this at Hobby Lobby. So I've seen people selling this on Facebook, like de-stash groups for like 18, 19 bucks. And I got this for like five at Hobby Lobby. So if you like this fabric and you have a local Hobby Lobby, go check it out. Go look in their cross-stitch stuff. And see if you can find it. I think they had this one, which is a gray. Yeah, because I like gray. Um, and they, I think they also had a tan gingham. Um, but instead of going on the de-stash groups where people are marking this stuff up, go find it somewhere else, if you can. This is a PTP. I want to say this is, yeah, this is 36 count doubloon. Super pretty modeling. This is a fat quarter, I believe. It's folded one more time. I'm not going to unfold it too much more. Uh, that was just a random purchase from Cross My Heart one day. Myself in the face. Trying to keep things in the bags organized. Because it doesn't have a tag. This is 32 count vintage country mocha. I'm not going to take that out of the bag, but um, you can see where I cut it. There you go. Uh, you can see right where I cut the fabric and where it's folded. So this is the front side of the fabric. This is the back side of the fabric. Um, we all know vintage country mocha. It's gorgeous. This is a 36 count um, and I am using it for one of my whistle stop projects. I have two pieces of this fabric next. Um, so I bought the first one from Silk Weavers. It is just a Zweigart fabric um, in Lagoon Blue. It's a 28 count linen. Things are falling off the table. Very pretty piece. Fat quarter. Again, let's fold it one more time. Um, no idea what I'm going to stitch on it, but I just loved the color of this. Some kind of Quaker or monotone type pattern, uh, monochromatic pattern would look amazing on here. And then on Stash Unload, I bought this. It was supposed to be a 40 count. Um, and I showed up and I looked and I said, this is 28. Um, and so I contacted the seller and she was very apologetic. And she said, I had it in 40 count. And she goes, but I'm sold out of it. So I think she buys stuff and then sells it through one of the unloading stash unloading sites. I'm not sure which one it is because I'm, I have several that I'm a member of. Um, she was very apologetic and then she did give me, she goes, you can send it back and I'll fully refund you. I'll pay for all the shipping and yada yada. I said, it's fine. I'll just have more fabric in my stash. And so she did give me um, a little bit of a discount since we had an error, but I wasn't asked for, but it was definitely appreciated. This was also, we're now getting into the R&R &R fabrics, um, collected from various sources. But like I said, R&R &R is one of my favorite dyers. My favorite thing is when you iron R&R &R fabric and you get the coffee smell that comes out of it. So good. So good. Um, this is 40 count light cappuccino. Um, it's a small piece. But it's 40 counts, so you can probably fit. I can probably get like two ornaments or something out of that. Um, two or three, depending on how I cut it.
This next one I am obsessed with. It is a 36 count R&R &R in dense fog. It's a gorgeous minty blue green color. Again, I got a fat quarter of it. This was from Pete Sakes. Obsessed. This is what I bought when I went down there um, for what's the stop. That was a random purchase that I just needed to have. I bought a lot of fabric. Uh, and then this was the other option that they sent for me for After the Roses. Um, and this is Patriot's Brew. Um, so this is 32 count, which is, like I said, just more of a little bit of a natural linen. Um, very pretty, great neutral. So always need neutrals in 32 count. And then I went to Cross My Heart the one day, and I think I did fat halves of both of these. Um, they're both 40 count r and R. This is sheep's straw. This one has some weird dye issues on the fabric, but it's towards the edge, so it's fine. Um, but this is sheep's straw. Again, a little bit more yellow toned fabric. And then this is Liberty Gathering Gray. Um, I also did a fat half of this, and this is more of a beigey, or a, more of like a gray. Grayish? I don't know how. Grayish? Yeah, gray color. So, fat halves of both of those. I walked in there and I was like, yep. You have some R&R &R 40, and she goes, do you stitch a lot of samplers? And I said, nope, I just need it. I stitch what I want. I do actually have some samplers going on right now. Um, Quakers are kind of my thing currently. It's always interesting to me how our tastes change and evolve over time. Um, Quakers though, I don't think are going away for, not going away from me. All right, so that was all of the random fabric. And now we just have Silk Weaver fabric. So Silk Weaver does flash sales pretty much every weekend. I already bought some more this, this weekend and I didn't need any more because fabric. Um, and they're really not even that discounted, or at least I don't think they're that discounted. But it's stuff that they already have in hand. It does take a while to show up. Um, not sure why. I think I still, I'm still waiting on like two orders plus the one that I just ordered for. So I have everything organized into counts. So we'll go through the bags pretty quickly. Um, there's a lot. First one is the first set is a 32 count. Um, Midnight Fantasy. This is a 32 count Lugana. I love this fabric and I already know what I'm going to stitch on it. Already know. It's going to be a surprise. But I told Stephanie and she goes, and I showed her this fabric and she goes, that's going to be perfect on there. And I said, I know. Then we also have Deep Caribbean, 32 count. This is an opalescent fabric. You can kind of see the sparkle. Um, Deep Caribbean. Very pretty. And cuter. So this is a little less modeling, a little bit more blue gray, whereas the other one was a little bit more blue and white. This is also opalescent. So my three 32 counts blues because I love blues and gray. So, love it. I need a bag for those. Everything else is in bag by count. 36 count, which like I said, is my favorite count. Now some of these um, are cut again because I use them for my whistle stop uh, fabrics. Uh, this is a 36 count Modena, which is an even weave in dark gray. So this is not very modeled at all. Um, this is a 36 count Modena 
in light twelve light twelve light taupe um, by Zweigart. So again, not model. This one has a little bit more color variation to it. This is 36 count Modena in Brazil nut. Yes, I did cut that fabric. How did I, did I cut this? Yes, I think all of these were um, fat quarters. So this is Brazil nut. It does, like I said, it does have a little bit more modeling variation to it than the other ones do. This is a very pretty piece of fabric. 36 count cognac again, Medina. Love me some 36 count even loop. And if you want to know what it's like to stitch on, it's like stitching on a dream. 36 count Modina antique almond. So pretty. This is one of my favorites. This is 36 count Modina treasure trove which is a very gray blue mixed with some green it's, and a little bit of tan to it too. It's a very interesting color. 36 count Modena in blush. It's a mauve type pink. 36 count Modena in days gone by. Much more modeled, much more variegated. I also am obsessed with this next one, which is 36 count Modena cinnamon roll. Yes. It's so pretty. So a much deeper neutral. All right. I think I had some 36 count linens too, but again, they're over there somewhere. So um, I am definitely on the 36 count even weave train from Silk Weaver. I need it all. Where's my bag? Here's my bag. I really also need to organize all of my fabric. The next count um, is 38 count. Uh, Delarna, which I had never heard of before, um, which is one of the cool things about Silk Weavers when they do these sales is they have kind of some odd counts um, of fabric. So they have 20, they have, um, they have different types. So they have like a Wexford linen, they have a Belfast linen, um, they have, um, they just have different counts of fabric things that you don't normally find. So this is all 38 count linen. Um, we have gold nugget. It is a very yellow buttercupy type fabric. Super pretty though. Doesn't have a ton of modeling. It has a little bit. We also have dirty carrot. And the last one is antique almond. So I think I had antique almond in the 36 count too, but this is in the 38 count linen. Guys, I'm going to be so happy to get all of this put away. This has literally just all been sitting out since and accumulating since then. And then we will move on to 40 count next. I'm definitely moving up into some of the higher count fabrics, which is a lot of fun. Um, they also have a 40 count even weave. Uh, so that's my definitely my preference. It does normally have a lot less modeling than the linens do. Um, but it is a Verdal. And this is Silk Weaver's Weigart 40 count Verdal in Pecan. Forty count Verdal, Silk Weavers Coral Crystals. This is a pink fabric, and I'm using the other half for a project, so you'll see that in my next video. Because this one is already going to take forever to load. Load. Uh, Forty count Sterling Silver, 
paper doll. Blue. Who doesn't love blue? This girl loves blue. Um, where are my other? I'm gonna go through all the her dolls first. Purely primitive. It's like a gray or a gray. Uh, all of the like a very light olive green and white. Purely primitive for doll. Forty count. Forty count gold spinner. Forty count Verdal in sand. That is so much fabric. And then the last ones I have are actually forty count linens. Um, we have French vanilla swirl. Pretty cocoa. I love this color. It's like a brown, it's like a purpley brown. It's very pretty. And then Napa Harvest, um, which is also a purpley brown, but a much richer purpley brown. This one really looks a lot more gray versus that one looks more brown, but um, yeah. Lots of 40 counts. And then I did, because I'm crazy, purchase some 46 count. So we have a 46 count Bristol linen, and this is a raw linen. 46. What am I going to stitch on there? No idea. Um, and the other one is 46 count Bergen linen in Celadon, um, which is a very pretty green. That's a lot of fabric. Now I need to put it all away. And I don't know where I'm gonna put it all away because I'm already out of room in where I store my current fabric. Um, craft room is definitely on the mind as to future projects that I need to do. Um, and fabric storage solutions will be coming along with that hopefully within the next year. But we have other home homework projects to do first so guys it's an hour and a half long video I hope that was um long enough feature film for you for this first video there will still be a second one because I still have all of my starts um and my whistle stop experience to share with you uh so if you stuck through this whole thing I really want to thank you so much for sticking through this entire video because it's long um and thank you for coming back after i've been away for so long uh again i always say this i really hope to be more consistent um this video was i knew going to be a tricky one because i had so much to show and so i knew that it was going to take me an hour to two hours to film I knew it was going to take me probably about half hour to set up and organize. It's going to take me probably an hour to dismantle and put things away where they need to go. And then it's going to take me time to get everything uploaded and edited. So thank you. I will be better. I promise. And I say that and I can't actually promise that, but I will try to be better about posting more consistently. I definitely do not want this to build up again because this was a lot and I need more water because my mouth is very dry right now from doing all the talking but I hope you are all doing fantastic I hope you have been doing some amazing stitching I hope you have not been letting the state of the world get to you too much everyone in the U.S. the election is almost over if you're like me you hate this time of year um, I don't really like to talk politics, so we're just going to avoid it. Um, I have my thoughts, I have my feelings, and it's for me to know and my ballot to know and nobody else, really, unless I choose to share that with you. So, um, just remember, 
to be kind to each other and that everybody perceives things differently. It is their reality and they just, you know, you can, you can see something and somebody else can see the exact same thing and you may have different thoughts and opinions on it and you just need to respect that. So be nice. We will get through this election. I just pray that we get through this election um, without the world falling apart, falling apart even more than it already has. So, whew, long video, and I'm just rattling now. So, I am going to cut this video off. You will be able to know if I make this video and my next video together because I'll either be wearing the same outfit or be wearing something different. Um, I doubt they will be posted on the same day. So I do want to get that other one out hopefully this week. So if it's if I don't do it today, which I really want to eat, and then maybe get this one uploaded. Um, so I'm guessing it probably won't be tonight. Um, Wednesday. I'm hoping for Wednesday that I can get the next video made. So in two or three days or my next day off. So again, thank you guys for stopping by. Thank you for hanging with me if you made it through this incredibly long video and I will see you guys all next time. Bye.